Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. This is the second episode I'm shooting from South Africa. This is actually Franschuk. Susie and I left Cape Town uh, just today, and we drove over to Franschuk, left-hand side of the road. We had a little bit of a, you know, hiccup along the way, not driving-wise, but just you know, foreign country, all that stuff. We stopped a really cool spot. We met with Kara. She showed us, a, she's from Indaba, which I'm reviewing here. And uh, we saw the Montessori school that they um, put a lot of money behind because they feel like education for the South African children is very important. So that's cool. I'm going to write an article about it on my blog. But talking about spe uh, spending your wine dollars wisely, I've reviewed Indaba before. In fact, I reviewed a uh, 2012 Merlot. They were mortified. They saw the YouTube. They said, what are you doing with that 2012? This was just last year. So when I stopped by with Kara, we tasted through some of their wines. I said, you know, I want to review these, and I'm going to review your newest vintages. So here we go. We're going to start right off. This is a beautiful lodge, by the way. This is Chimenee way up in the hills above Franschuk, which is right behind me. This is a great lodge called the Marco Polo Lodge. If you ever want a, a cool place to stay, this is right out in the middle of vineyards. They have zebra down there, antelopes, bison. They have all kinds of stuff around here. It's a game reserve. All right, let's get started right off. All of these, all of these across the board retail at $9. So we're going to get started right off with the uh, 2017 Indaba Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this is... Sustainably grown, um, superbly crafted, of course. 13.5 alcohol. Let's get a close up. By the way, Susie and I are having a great time here in South Africa. Uh, hard to believe that we're, we have one week and we're going to be heading back. I did an interview with uh, Justin from uh, Constancia Glen. You will have already seen that. I'm putting that up soon on YouTube, actually tomorrow here, so it'll go up on Friday, and this one will go up hopefully on, well, this might be next Friday, you know, it's because the way it's working out, all right, so let's see what we get on the nose, the 2017 Indaba Sauvignon Blanc, I guess I'm going to have to drink these, I don't know what I'm done, okay. Ah, I'm going to grab a glass. Hold on. I didn't even think about that. There we go. My duck bucket. Okay. So I get a lot of melon on the nose right off the bat. A little bit of a wet stone component, which I really like in this wine. Get a touch of grass, not a lot. This isn't what I'd call a grassy nose, but it has a little bit, just a hint of grass. But I like the melon aspect and just a touch, just a touch of mango. Let's see what we get on the palate. So, good acidity, but Pretty mellow. I think a lot of people would like this wine. What I like about it, it has that nice wet stone component coming through. On top of melon, the little bit of lemon lime in the background, and just a hint of mango on the mid palate. Not complex, but very delicious. And that's what Kara said they're shooting for with these Indaba wines. Because they want people to open them and enjoy them. Uh, they're not shooting for a huge complexity. But what I like about this wine is the, um, the um, wet stone element that comes through. And I'm giving a little white pepper on the back side. So good effort for $9. I'm going to go straight up B- minus on that wine. I think that it has uh, C plus B-. minus. It's a better than average Sauvignon Blanc. It's not funky. It has a lot of good elements to it. I think a lot of people will like it. Let's move on. Now this is, we're going to the Merlot. This is their 2017 Merlot, I believe. Sauvignon Blanc was 17 as well. Double check on that. Yeah, 17. 
So the 2017 Indaba Merlot. Um, I'm pretty sure this is all, yeah, Western Cape is where they come from. That's a big appellation. They can draw from a lot of different places on the Western Cape. Um, kind of like the Columbia Valley. I use that example a lot, but it is a lot like the Columbia Valley. Here's a close-up. Again, $9. Nine bucks. We tried the twelve. I actually liked the twelve, which was uh, which told me that the winemaker is serious about his wine. I know these are inexpensive, but anybody who can make a Merlot for eight bucks or nine bucks retail, and you know have five or six years on it, still drinking good, that says something about the winemaker. Let's see what we get on the nose. So I get a lot of like um, um, cherry candy is what I'm getting on this. Just like, like uh, really, like good hard cherry candies. Maybe with a touch of red flowers. So let's see what we get on the palate. See, I like this. Um, good acidity. You have that cherry fruit, but there's more than cherry fruit. There's a little bit of a... Uh, 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 a pomegranate note coming through, a little bit of tobacco, and um, let's see what else. Uh, but that cherry candy aspect does come through. A tiny bit of grip on the tannins, but it is very soft, easy to drink, very approachable, very delicious. Anybody for nine bucks would not complain about this. And let me tell you. This would be a great pizza wine, burgers, hot dogs, and you can even have it with a steak. It has enough of that acidity there to do that. Yes, it's not complex, but it is delicious and it has more going on. It's not soup, it's not made up wine. It's real wine. That's what I'm getting from this. That's what I remember from 2012. And I like that aspect of it. I'm gonna go straight up B on this one. I think it's a solid effort for $9. Uh, yeah, maybe B, B minus, B minus B. Really like it. Might be being generous because I'm on vacay. I'm out here in South Africa. It's a beautiful thing. But I'm serious. This is good Merlot. If you're a Merlot fan and you want something that you can, for nine bucks, this is redonkulously good. So I'm going to go B minus B on that one. Let's move on. The rinse here. Again, nine bucks. This is the Indaba Mosaic 2017. So this is a blend. 2017 Mosaic in Bayodaba. See if I can find the, yeah, it's uh, predominantly cab, 78% cab, 12% or low, and 6% cab franc and 4% petit verdot. So it's a straight up Bordeaux style blend for sure. Sorry, it took me so long to read that. Not the perfect lighting here. And you all know that my eyesight sucks. Let's see what we get on the nose. This has a cherry, but a little bit of plum action coming through on this one. A little bit of a tobacco on the back end, which I like. And a little bit of licorice. Uh, so I get this plum, cherry, licorice notes coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good acidity again. Nice high tones on the mid palate. It lifts. It makes my mouth water. It has that nice lift in the mouth. I get cherry, tobacco, um, a little bit of uh, licorice in the back drop. And this is like a mouth watering. This is, again, one of those wines you could bring to the table. You could bring it as, as a, a bottle to bring when you're coming for dinner. And everybody would like it. Everybody would like it. But I'm just telling you, this needs food, which is really cool. So the winemaker is making food-friendly wines for nine bucks, and that's awesome. You can drink them by themselves, of course, but this is a really good bottle of wine for the money. A little bit of raspberry, a little bit of a tannic grip on the backside, and then it gets a little earthy and tobacco on the back of the finish. 
great bottle of wine for nine bucks. Seriously good wine. I'm going to go straight up B, hedging towards B plus on that. It's a great value and good wines. Seek out a double wines. They're really good. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.